Good day. Welcome. Welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to code a power factor correction routine for a microcontroller. I'll make um, CCM, CCM PFC routine in a microcontroller. For this example, I'm using the PIC24 FJ64 GA002. And um, before I start, it's important to note that in the other um, videos I've done about using the, the PIC24, um, you can actually implement those systems on the PIC24. I don't recommend doing that. Um, well, not that, not necessarily that I don't recommend. There are better options to do those, but they actually work on the PIC24. So, for example, um, a battery charger, solar charge controller, an inverter. Um, interleaved converter, etc. You could actually use them on a PIC24. You could actually implement those systems on a PIC24 and it would work out just fine. But for this particular system, a power factor correction, it will not work on a PIC24. It will absolutely not work. Um, and you might be asking yourself why, but in this particular simulation, you would notice that. I made a slight adjustment. As you can see, the processor clock frequency there is 140 megahertz. So um, you need a microcontroller that can at least do that, like a sort of a DSP or STM32 that could at least get up to 140 megahertz or 70 megahertz for an instruction um, uh, instruction frequency of 70 megahertz at least. Um, so as you can see here, I made a modification in the in the software to make this run at 140 megahertz. In in reality, it cannot do that. I simply did that to sort of show how you'd go about it if you sort of had a DS pick in this particular scenario. And essentially, the 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 way it's coded would also be applicable to an STM32 and certain types of Texas instrument devices. This is essentially to show how how that works and um, in the code wise to show the the routine on how you go about coding it and to actually show how what you what you should be expecting to get you, you're probably not going to get this perfectly the waveforms that I'm going to show but this is something you can expect to get following this procedure and for this particular microcontroller the PIC24 FJ64 GA002 do not try it on this because this microcontroller is the maximum switch um maximum clock frequency is 32 megahertz it's 32 megahertz and um for this you actually need 140 megahertz to do a power factor correction successfully on the microcontroller it's it's very heavy on processor it, it requires it requires a high speed processor basically um so basically i'm just gonna get into it so in terms of a power factor correction um ccm continuous um conduction mode um you require three major sensors um output volts um you require um three major sensors um, output voltage sensor um, uh, you need a current sensor for the inductor and you also need another sensor for the for the voltage off to the rectifier um, for the rectified voltage and keep in mind in this case the rectified voltage is going to look like a, sort of like a um, it's rectified it's basically um, rectified so it's gonna look something like that right it has to look like this it has to look like this because you're trying to shape the inductor current to sort of look like that because okay. you're essentially trying to so the voltage will look like that and essentially what you're trying to do is you're trying to get the inductor to look like that, the current going through the inductor to look like that. Right. You want it to follow this particular shape. So that's the goal of power factor correction in essence. 
and to actually do this you need you need to basically um have a current controller that shapes the current that shapes the current to look like this um so that's what you that's what you need um so basically that's what you need all right let's just distract it for a second there um so essentially what the code is doing there are two loops there's an inner current loop fast loop and then there's an outer voltage loop um, which is a much slower loop and the outer voltage loop is to have a sort of some regulation on the output voltage here not um not a perfect um not a perfect voltage it has quite a bit of steady state error but that's not the goal the goal is essentially to 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 shape um, the current going through the inductor and by doing so have a sinusoidal current um, being pulled from the grid the V sign over there um, so over here this just basically acts like a, this is a pre-regulator it's just to have some sort of regulation at this point here so it's not the major concern so essentially the first thing to do is when you have such a system is to test the inner current loop first it's important to test the inner current loop first before you test before you test everything. So, what you want to do first is a simple um, current PI PI controller routine. In this case, it's also a PI controller, not a PID, because the derivative makes it quite complicated. Obviously, it's useful if you actually calculate all the values you need. And um, sometimes you could use um, um, a, a pole zero compensator. Um, there are lots of papers out there that have been written about this. There's actually a really good video about um, doing this um, with an STM32. I think it's available on YouTube. I think I'd, I'd link that. It's by a company called Bericha, Bericha Digital. Um, I probably butchered that name, but it's a, it's a company that actually does this. And they have a really nice video on YouTube about this. Uh, I'll link that so you can check that out. But th what this video is, is literally just showing you how you'd go about coding it on on a baseline level. Keep in mind, for a more um, substantial one, like a professional, um, fully full packaged um, digital PFC, it includes a lot of things like um, like inrush current limiting in the in the code implemented in the code as well, and gradually increasing the voltage set point so you don't have 400 volts set point straight up it gradually increases that and it has um brownout protection it has several things so what this is is just the bare the bare minimum of it of of the baseline the the, the, the main part about it like like sort of like the chewy chocolatey center of like the candy in essence right so that's what this video is just trying to show um that procedure so this is where i'm going to start right so here you have a basic PI controller routine. So this particular PI controller here, this equation is a velocity form um, controller. Um, you could use a position form, but I, f I, I find for, for digital power um, applications, the, the position form does not work too well from my experience. From what I've tried, the velocity form is, is far more stable. And, and works best usually the position form is able to get to the set point but let's say you have a set point you have a lower set point than what you had before it has quite a lot of uh, it has it has a lot of issues actually coming down because um, the I guess with the position you also require um, entire integral wind up whilst for the velocity form it's sort of intrinsic intrins intrinsic right and um, it's, it's just much better for for digital power applications the velocity form so in essence that's what this is so I got link a document in the description where you can sort of look at how they came up with this particular form here I'm not really gonna get into it I used an array format because it's it's easier to do this because as you can see this is the um, previous error, the previous previous error. I, I think this is a much compact way of writing it than writing previous previous error. 
you know, having some weird variable looking like that is a much um, simpler way to do it. And so you have this. Obviously, this is the current, um, the previous um, PI output, PI controller output, or let me say PID controller. This, this is the this is the previous one. So you equate it to the current one, um, and the previous previous error to the previous error, and the previous error to the previous error to the current error, and you compute that. So this is this is this basically always stays the same. This part here. It's clear cut. It's that's just the way it is. The major parts that you have to worry about are the coefficients, the KP, the KI, and the KD, which I'll get into how to tune them. Um, I don't have equations of exactly how to tune them. I sort of use the general thumbs up rule, which I guess um, that's probably that's probably not the best way to do it. But in terms of just getting um, something out to start with. It's not such a bad idea to do that. Um, as long as you limit the due to say your maximum due to cycle here, which is 0 0.8. And um, so basically this part here is just limiting the um, limiting the DT cycle. That's what's happening here. And once that's done, this is the output here and the maximum due to cycle is on a scale of one. And this basically scales it to this particular microcontroller. So, like I said, in the simulation, I modified the speed of this controller to be 140 megahertz. In the real world, it's not that fast. But for the sake of this simulation, and and with the assumption that well, if you're watching this video, whatever you're gonna try it on would be a much faster microcontroller, preferably one with the speed that high. A DS. A, digital signal processor for instance um, would and assuming that so the max duty in this case for a switching frequency of 10 micro um, 100 kilohertz this the value for that came down to 699 so the max the max duty is 699 so this represents 100 percent duty cycle for this particular microcontroller in this particular example right so essentially this is sort of like a fantasy microcontroller so the the sole purpose is just how to go about the code just the steps um so that's how you have that and remember i said was essentially trying to shape was essentially trying to get the inductor to have this shape right the current going through the inductor to have the shape same shape that's going through the the um the rectified voltage so the first thing that you want to do is if you have this like a hardware you want to make sure that the voltage here the voltage across these terminals right after the rectifier looks like this it's important that they look like this if they do not look like this you should not go ahead with anything just make sure that they actually look like this and they usually don't they usually don't look like that um, right away without a capacitor you need a small value capacitor so you should probably start from um, a capacitance of 10 nanofarads to something like 4 microfarads I, I believe anything higher than 4.7 microfarads usually starts to rectify this voltage and you do not want that like not not rectify it starts to make it look more it starts to look more like that right it starts to look more smooth than it is you want it to look like this you want it to have this semi sinusoidal form you don't want it looking dc you don't want it looking smooth i'm not say dc totally dc but you don't want it looking looking smooth you want it to look sinusoidal as such um that's what you want that should be your goal and um so that's what you you get for that part and you usually like i said you require um capacitors so as you can see in the simulation, this capacitance is 10 nanofarads, which is quite small. In the real world, 10 nanofarads will not be enough to actually filter it. I'm saying this because I've actually built this system in the real world. Um, I didn't have as much success because I didn't have, I didn't know that much back then when I was building it as I do now about about the system. So, 10 nanofarads is simply not enough. This is a simulation, so the amount of noise is obviously limited to theoretically theoretical noise that arises 
from these diodes, etc. Um, but but in the real world, this this inductive characteristics in the in this traces have got resistance in there, so you require a larger capacitance to actually filter it. Usually, um, one microfarad is enough, but you should put the capacitors there and actually check the voltage that it looks like this. And by looks like this, I mean the minimum here. The minimum here should be as close to zero as possible, and it should look like this as possible and the minimum this should be zero not not 10 volts you know 10 volts is not too bad but it, it's better if it's at zero if the minimum there at those points there at those points there and there if that's zero volts you know if that's zero it might be you know, maybe negative 0 0.5 whatever it's not too bad but it should be zero right so that's the first thing to check and then after that now you can check the the current loop you can actually check the current loop and your current sensor that you actually put there is important the acs712 is fine what i do recommend is do not go to one that's 30 amps because the accuracy is kind of compromised at that level i recommend you limit the the sensor that you put here to to a 15 or 10 amp sensor because most of the time you're not even going to be dealing with currents that high anyway but 20 amp is safe absolutely cap it off at 20 amps because i feel like 20 amps is like a good balance between the amount of current you could deal with and um the accuracy it's not it's not too compromised it's still fairly accurate at 20 amps above that it becomes kind of weird if you're not dealing with super high currents like current, I mean current above 15 amps, it makes no sense to use a 30 amp current sensor, honestly. Um, so in this case, you have a 20 amp um, sensor, which I'm assuming in this particular example. And um, yeah, so doing that, then coming to the IRF, the IRF is important. The IRF is obtained from the V actual AC. So the V actual AC in this case, is this is this is this signal right here that's the v actual ac this is the um ac waveform i, I call it v actual because it's what's rectified um and it's not a smooth smooth dc it's a dc but not a smooth dc but i just gave it that name so that's the voltage at that node and that's what we want the inductor to look like so initially when you're testing you just do this you just multiply 0 0.035 so let's say you want this particular value, this value here. You want that value maximum to be what, 10 amps, thereabouts. Remember, we're just testing now. You want that to be 10 amps. So essentially what you do is you say, this value here, that's 325.269 usually. So you say 10 divided by that. 10 divided by 325, or no, rather 325 Wait, what am I saying? So, yeah. So let's say the maximum value you actually want there. So imagine um, a resistance. So you have the voltage there. You have the current there. So you just say 325.269. And um, essentially what you get is, um, I just want to find the calculator. See if I have one close by. Okay, I don't think I have one close by, but anyway, um, I guess you could do a bit of a, just trial and error it, in a way. Um, I, I recommend you use a calculator, but I don't have one here. So, you just um, basically just choose a value here such that the IRF, the maximum IRF that you'd get if this was 325.269, um, that the maximum value you get here would actually be 10. So it will be 10 divided by 325.269. That would be give you a value here. Or you could actually even take this down more if you wanted that max value to be 5 amps. And that's the first thing to do, right? Remember, you're just sort of trying to see if you can make the, 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 the current look sort of sinusoidal. So after choosing your coefficients, which... I will discuss how you, you go about choosing those. 
after you choose your coefficients then you do this then you just test this so i'm just gonna run that on also you have to disable the voltage meter so right so the irf is this it's equate equals to that so you run that and then um just go on there okay i've actually done this sim before let me just close that to see that now and this is the ac current coming in let me just do that um ac then you just run that and also one thing i wanted to say was um for the um, current loop it has to be super fast so in this it has to be quite fast so in this example it's 70 microseconds um usually they usually make them um in professional applications they usually make them the exact same as the switch and frequency so the loop would literally happen every 10 microseconds because the faster it happens the better the, the the better chances it will look um sinusoidal so just do that as you can see and there you go you have a it's not it's not perfect it's not perfect as you can see it's still a bit looking a bit off there at the corners there but you know it's 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 somewhat it's somewhat all right it's somewhat looks sinusoidal um remember if you are using this in an stm32 the time for each loop could potentially be a lot faster um faster than 70 microseconds 70 microseconds is the best that the dspic can do if you code it in c right if you code it in asm you can get a much faster time but coding in asm is not very intuitive it takes um it's a bit of a learning curve actually to actually to, to do that if you're not used to it right so but if you were going to code it in c i find the best time that i'm able to get where everything functions properly is 70 microseconds right but with the stm based on how it functions it could actually do it much faster than 70 microseconds um sorry based on the architecture based on the um, hardware architecture of the, of the stm32 um by stm32 i mean specifically stm32 f411 re that one specifically um probably the others could do it as well but i know for sure stm32 f411 re or f401 re and um there you go you have this so you actually doing this to sort of check your coefficients obviously now i've tuned them i've spent time to tune tune the uh, coefficients with the general thumbs up rule which you can check out up here um you want to start with that and proceed as follows and um yeah just take a read at that and um and essentially essentially what what you are designing here is a very aggressive pi controller um a very aggressive one so by aggressive i mean you can't use this for a dc dc um like a dc dc converter like a like a voltage uh, mode control like a strict voltage mode control a strict current mode control on the output you can't do it because it will just oscillate so much um because essentially you're trying to make a super fast acting controller that's what you're trying to do so which means that the ki value is going to be very much close to the kp value remember the kp value if it's too high it will literally make everything unstable it makes your system unstable and the ki in this case as you increase the ki it will look a lot smoother right so this um sin sinusoid will look a lot smoother as you increase the ki but the ki cannot be too close to the kp value if it's too close to the kp value you're going to find a lot of oscillations you can see it's happening a bit here but it's not too much it's nothing that um, nothing crazy you can you can handle it right but with regards to the or with the um how do you say it so if the kp value goes up too much everything goes unstable so that's the you have a you have a nice window there you have sort of a window where you kind of have to get kp and ki right um based on these right 
um, and I set 3.5 here, um, you should start from 2.5 and absolutely stop at 1.5. So, um, I explained this in another video, but this is this is basically what the gen general thumb suck um, rule. Thumb suck rule, and um, yeah. So this is what you have to do first. You have to test the current first. First off, check that you're actually getting a sim um, a waveform like this on after it's been rectified, right? After it's been rectified and you probably need capacitive filtering, um, um, non-electrolytic polyester capacitors, preferably not, not electrolytic capacitors, to actually get it to look like that. And then you taste the current loop only. You taste the current loop, you say IRF is equals to a fraction of that V actual AC. And then you test that. And then you test this loop first, you zero out the outer loop. And then you test that. And once you're sure that that's working out fine, now this particular 0 0.035, you can replace that with this. And now this value, this value, this variable called final, you obtain that from the outer loop. You obtain this final value from the outer loop. Because keep in mind, you're trying to have a fixed voltage on the output. So this final value, is is the result of another PI controller that's been controlled by the output voltage, right? So you have the exact same PID controller as the current, but this time the output is guess what? Final. Right? This output is literally the PWM is what goes out as PWM signal. But this output is called final and that's scaled to the max current. So max current in this case if you go up here, um, max current in this case, I made it 0 0.065. Always, 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 max current is going to be whatever max current you want here divided by divided by that value there. So then I think I should put a comment by the side there. So uh, max inductor current, which is. Um, in the case of if your input is 230 volts, so it's going to be um, the actual maximum current that you want, actual maximum, actual max current, right, divided by root 2, SQRT 2. multiplied by the RMS essentially the V peak this is what the V peak is this highlighted part is the V peak so yeah, SKRT multiplied by the RMS so the RMS is 230 volts so it's going to be 230 volts multiplied by root 2 and then it will be actual max current divided by 230 multiplied by root 2 and that's how you get that and that's how you get this particular value so you can try kind of find out i think this is equivalent to 20 20 amps i think possibly this is equivalent to 20 amps um yeah so that's how you get that value and that would be the maximum value coming out of this pi pid loop and then for this particular PID loop, you want to you want to make it such that this is slow acting. You don't want this to sort of affect the fast loop because the the main loop that we care about is the current loop, this particular loop. So you don't want to make this aggressive. You want to make it quite soft and chilled. And how you do that is basically the coefficient. As you can see, the KP is super low. The KI also super low. You want to keep them low, low, low. And um, that's how that's how you go about that. And um, in essence, that's that's a that's a PFC. That's a power factor correction. This is the this is the basic basic um, power factor correction. Obviously, if you look at the waveform, it could be a lot better with a microcontroller. With it's it's all about the loop. It's all about the loop execution time. If you have a loop execution time that's seventy microseconds or less. 
the lesser the lesser the time the better the fast the faster the loop the better essentially and that's why that's why you have to use a digital signal processor you cannot use this particular microcontroller um i've tried it i've, I've tried several coefficients for it it, it just doesn't work out because it can't it, it simply can't do all these um calculations quickly it, it requires time i guess if you went down to the asm level it could probably make something work with this but um most people don't want to do that myself included i prefer to work in c so and hence you might need a digital signal at the very least at the aspect at the very least at the very least all right and so that's that for the excuse me and um yeah that's about it and also another part to take note of is the is the sensor um you want to make sure the lower um value is as big as possible so in this case i'm using 100k and uh, 12,000 K which is quite this is quite an unrealistic it's quite a large value actually but you can go ahead and use that so um, everything else in the code is basically just the sensor stuff how to calculate the sensor values which is explained up here 5 volts is the VREF and 1023 represents 2 to the power of 10 minus 1 which is the ADC resolution first step to get the actual voltage second step to scale that voltage up to the um, this step is to get the actual voltage on the microcontroller pin the next step is to actually scale that up to the actual normal voltage that's been sensed and then this next step is basically to speed everything up and obviously the same formula is used for the DC part as the AC part which is this right and um, yeah and for the current um, there's an offset of 2.5 and um, it's 100 millivolts per amps and that's how you get that actual and um, obviously final I, I couldn't think of any other variable so I just used the final and yeah there you go and um, this this is this is the basically what it looks like and other um, applications there are other interesting ways to code this but um, this is the way that makes the most sense to me and I've tried several other means of doing this like putting them in different um, timer interrupts that was total disaster did not work out so I prefer to just put them in the same um, interrupt and it's and it's simpler it's easier to work with and um, yeah and everything else are just variables as you can see the variables initialized the ref the actual vac i ref i actual and the v loop count to keep track of the outer voltage loop and the the error the error array pid for the voltage and for the current and everything in the main is also initialized the same and right now the voltage set point is 380 i just changed it to 390 um, to actually see it run and um, just go back so that's the voltage we should be expecting on the output so I want to demonstrate that first so that's, um, there's a bit of a limitation on the data that this um, actually has so I'm just gonna I guess maybe I should just do both of them at the same time All right so I'm just put that there and first off just put this over there and second um, Take that there. So that's the outer outer voltage, and um, this is the inner current. Um, yeah, and I'm just gonna change the time to 200 milliseconds, um, which is, you know, I'm I'm actually not sure how well that stacks up to the others that you might get. And also one thing that I wanted to say, you do not want this capacitor value to be too big. Um, you should anything uh, you should sort of cap it off at a thousand microfarads actually. It's usually good enough. 
um, you can go higher if you want but I usually find if you go too high here um, it affects the input current quite a bit um, remember this is simply a pre-regulated to uh, an isolated um, DC DC converted topology such as a flyback forward isolated buck whatever converted to topology you, you wish and the MOSFET should obviously be an N-channel MOSFET, not an IGBT. Well, you can use an IGBT if you're a fan of um, losses. And um, But um, MOSFET, if you want better performance, shot key diode. And the inductor as well. I find you should try to go as high as reasonably possible. Um, so if you have a really high frequency, not really high decent frequency like 100 kilohertz 1 milli henry over here or at least um 700 micro because remember you're working in ccm you cannot go too low in the inductor value and yeah it should be all right should i actually start running it but anyway it's running should take um take some time and yeah so that's 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 it for the hardware really and also for the voltage sensor you might want to connect the uh, a capacitor um, across that 10 nanofarads. I usually go for 10 nanofarads. Um, yeah, Let's put some filter in there. So there's the load. Um, yeah, um, um, power factor correction is quite uh, weird. Um, it, it's very sensitive. You know, it's one of those um, parts of power electronics where it's like you kind of have to get the math right. Um, like to, to get it right all the time you sort of have to do the math a lot and um, you could obviously use trial and error um, but um, you know it's a very sensitive sort of thing but basically the procedures that I just said gives you much better chance of actually getting CCM on the output just ensuring that everything your waveforms sort of look right from back to front and so the set point was what uh, 390 let me just go there and check. So, so the top there is 399, bottom 300, and just zoom into that. So the top is 390, the bottom is. Gosh, I don't have my glasses here. The bottom is 388 top 390 which is not too bad which is not too bad uh, i could like i said it could be better it could be better but it's it's not terrible just delete that and um this is the this is the current which is the main part like i said as you can see i kind of pushed hard on the ki value probably you should take it down a little bit because it's causing some oscillation there um but um but it does look a fair bit like a sinusoid. Certainly better than that um, notchy thing you get when you use a use just a simple capacitive voltage filter. Um, and um, so this is this is what it is. Um, yeah, it's not the best, but uh, I guess it's the best uh, that one can do with with this sort of microcontrollers. And um yeah, that's it that's about it really. So there's there isn't more to it. Um so yeah. And um just trying to make sure I don't forget anything. Um as usual if you have any questions regarding this and um other than PFC it's something that I find very interesting generally, um power factor correction. In all all the forms of it, uh, the bri bridgeless topologies as well, where the semi-bridgeless and bridgeless, I find that those things very interesting and, and challenging as well, which is all part of it. So, if you got any uh, questions as to what what is going on exactly with this, um, with the, the coding aspect, I guess, um, please do ask. And uh, if I don't know the answer, I'd probably say I don't know the answer, etc. And um, all the based on your on this particular application on coding this. All right, bye bye. Cheers. Thanks for watching.